The war with Matilda of Tuscany is nearing the end. It has been years since the Italians have made a concerted effort to strike against my Norman brothers, but just like the last time, we have turned them back with their tails between their legs. Now, it will all come down to one final battle outside the walls of Capua, where we can defeat the Duchess and her allies once and for all. After that, I may finally be able to attend to my own ambitions. Hello Wanderers, and welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series, following the exploits of Duke Richard of Capua. As you may remember, we last left off in the midst of a war between the forces of Duchess Matilda of Tuscany and her allies in Carinthia and abroad, fighting against our Norman coalition here in the south. Uh, the Duke Robert of Apulia and myself, Duke Richard of Capua. And here we are in the final culminating battle of this war. We have handed it to the Italians in every engagement, uh, destroying their forces on multiple occasions. And it looks like this is going to be the final battle of the war. Will we have a chance to prove ourselves? And it seems to be happening very near to Capua itself. We may even be able to see this battle happening from the walls of our city. But let us see how this battle goes, if any notable characters will make a name for themselves here. Uh, speaking of which, our knight, uh, Jordan Dranga, that is our son and heir, uh, managed to wound one of the enemies which is uh, just proving himself. He is a, an able warrior, that's for sure. He, he learned well. And with our allies coming in, we easily crush the Tuscan forces. And that will be the war. We have taken, taken our land and held it from the encroaching Italians, and that should give us a pretty good buffer here for for some time to come we will just let the peace deal be struck and then it will be time to move on to other matters before we jump into that though i do want to thank everybody who's uh liked the series and commented and offered your uh, historical notes and suggestions for the series. I really do appreciate that. I'm uh, really glad you guys are liking the series, uh, as this is my first time delving into this kind of long form uh, role play based Let's Play type series. And if it seems like everybody's really enjoying it, we're definitely going to be doing some more videos. So just keep uh, supporting the channel and you'll be getting some more content like this, that's for sure. But there we have it, the battle has been won and we can now move on to other matters. Now, we have been helping Duke Robert the Fox a lot in the last little bit. We helped him with his war here in Sicily we helped him with his own civil war, where we had to go against our former ally, the Count of Lanciano, and now we've helped him defend his land from the forces of Tuscany. And honestly, I think it's time for Duke Robert to to pay a little bit back. Also, what's going on with his wife? The Great Fox. Ouch. Well, um... Things are not going well for you. I think we need to capitalize on our alliance with Duke Robert here before we get uh, run into any problems with, with him, honestly. He has been excommunicated by the Pope, uh, Pope Alexander II, uh, who, as you may remember, is uh, quite, the, quite, the, quite the kindly old man here. Uh, he is infirm, so we don't know how much longer this Pope is going to last. Seems like one of his last acts may have been to ex excommunicate Duke Robert. That's no major concern for us. Our main concern here is Prince Gizelf of Salerno. Now, we have been looking into 
building up our forces for the war against Duke Gizov. And as some of you may have suggested, even though we don't have access to the heavy horsemen uh, due to the time period that we are in, those heavy horsemen would be uh, much later on. The Normans were uh, apparently known for their for their light horsemen, which totally makes sense that you know those heavy armored knights would be an kind of extrapolation of the tactics and stuff they learned. Uh, uh, through their cavalry in the past. So we will be looking into getting some light horsemen. We can actually afford that now. It's going to take away quite a bit of our income, but I think that this is going to tip us over the edge here. The question is, are we going to call in our ally in this war? I mean, I think... I think we're going to have to. I think we understand that we deserve a little bit of recompense for all the aid that we've been giving to Robert. And even though he does seem to be somewhat unhinged, we need to we need to make this alliance work for us for once. So we will be calling in to Robert here. We can get rid of all of those. And yes, our son is still unmarried after the tragic loss of his wife. And we do have a number of children here from our uh, other sons. Actually, all three of my sons have children. Uh, our eldest son just has one daughter at the moment. I don't know if him and his wife are getting along too well. We did have a moment in the previous episode where she did seem to be showing an unusual level of interest in us and uh we had to we had to decline that i believe once our forces yes look like our forces are mostly built up we'll just let these horsemen prepare and then we will be ready to enact our own war i know going to war so soon after Fighting this war against Tuscany may seem pretty quick, especially from the perspective of a character who has been fighting a lot of wars already. But I think from this perspective, we are kind of in a constant state of, of war and expansion. And I think that our Norman soldiers understand this and that it is a kind of expected that we've gone here and we're going to have to really fight to to take what we deserve to be our or consider it to be ours since my vassal count sergios arrived at court as per my generous invitation he has barely left his chambers i demand an explanation when i push the door open count sergios is seated seated by his desk writing fiercely as i clear my throat he jumps out of his skin he quickly stuffs a roll of parchment into his pocket and turns towards me with an uneasy look on his face. Oh, Count Sergius, what are you plotting? What are you plotting? Tell me. Did he really think I would not see that? Give it to me at once. With a shivering hand, he offers me the crumpled parchment. Well, 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 how delightfully wicked. According to this blackmail letter, Sergius is a sexual deviant. Well, now, Sergios, that is rather interesting. Count Sergios, you have been a thorn in our side for many years, and I wonder if we can use this against you in some way. We have other matters to deal with first, though. Bloodstained cloth, crow's feathers, strange-smelling concoctions. This is the evidence presented to me by a group of villagers from Capua as proof that Ansia has been practicing witchcraft in her hat. Witchcraft? Oh, dear. The villagers claim her evil works must be the cause of their poor harvest and are calling for her execution. Well... I mean... She's got some... Good skills, honestly. Peasants already hate us. Ah, uh, what? 
But that's the thing. What would Duke Richard do? What would he do? The evidence is circumstantial. Uh, release her. She must be burned for her crimes against God. We are cynical. That's for sure. A witch, you say, could use a new advisor. Could we use a new advisor? Let us take a little look here. I mean, we do have our son in this position, but... Damn, she is way better than our son. That is for sure. You know, I think that we have a, a proven track record of finding these lowborn people and raising them up into these kind of high up positions. And I think that we could see the potential in this character. I mean, we don't really care about our peasants. Honestly, we've, we've shown that many times, the Lombard peasants here. I think we're going to bring her onto our court, and I think we're going to tell our son that he has better, better things to do. Now, I think that he is going to be replacing Pandolf de Aquino, uh, who has served us well, but is not the most trustworthy person in our court. So I think we're going to try to find him here. Where are you, Jonathan? Yeah. You're not particularly good at that, but you are trustworthy. So I think that's quite fine. You'll do anyways. And Pandolf, I am sorry, but you are... Oh, never mind. We actually can't have a woman as our chancellor because we Normans are uh, a little bit uh, patriarchal, a little bit too patriarchal for my liking. Ah, honestly, uh, she seemed like she'd be great at the job. All right, Jonathan, we changed our mind. Uh, go back to your old job. But we do have her as a courtier. So can we put her to use? How can we put her to use? That's that's the question. Ansia Cluffing. She's not even lowborn. She's actually from a noble house, technically. Even though her family and whatnot is unknown. How can we put you to use? Well, you've got high learning. Man, maybe you would make a good court tutor. That seems like a... Yeah, yeah, okay. This, I think, makes a lot of sense. Oh wait, that's Emma. Emma would be a good court tutor too. Good, good, good. Ansia Klauf. You know what, I think... Yeah, I think you're gonna be our court tutor. And you can teach our children the Lombard language, which will be useful here. So, and I'm pretty sure we can afford that. This means that we can actually Get these children learning languages here so that you can learn Italian vulgar. That's exactly what we want you to be learning. We'll get all of these kids learning Italian vulgar if we can. Yep, yeah, you can learn that as well. You are too young. What about your brother here? Yeah, too young. So our children are learning Italian vulgar, which is uh, just perfect. Our troops should be ready to go. Hmm? What is this? Your son Jordan has taken a great interest in my work as court chaplain. As of late, if you were to graciously allow me to spend some time with the young man, he is sure to learn quite a few things about the history of our realm and the traditions of our people. What will this do? Jordan could learn about the responsibilities of being a bishop. Well, this increases learning. Jordan's future does not concern you. We will see if you are speaking the truth first. Hmm. Do we tr I mean, we're cynical. He has- Bishop Orderic has proved us well so far, but I think... Considering how things go here, uh, you know, I think we're gonna- we're gonna ask a little bit further into this, see what he's really wants to- to kind of teach our son 
Despite strict scrutiny, my spy was unable to find anything that might persuade me to believe that his intentions are nothing but pure. He seems truly interested in only helping... Okay, you know what? You have proven yourself, Bishop Orderick. I think that you, you know, we will mostly trust you from this point forward. No harm in letting him tutor Jordan. Yeah. I mean, if he can improve our son's, you know, learning skills, he is going to be taking over the realm one day. So if he can teach him anything useful, we, we might as well. Bishop Orderick's tutelage of my son is already bearing fruit. He has long learned a lot more than I dared hope, and he is taking some of his future responsibilities much more seriously than before. Damn, Bishop Orderick. That is awesome. His learning has increased by two. That is really useful. And the tutoring is still going to go on. I wonder if, if it's going to improve him even more. Damn, good job, Bishop Orderick. We will have to look into some way of, of rewarding the good bishop in the future. But more importantly, we need to deal with Duke Gizilf. And I think, I think it is time. We will press our claims here on the county of Salerno. And we will make it ours. War has been declared. Gizelf will raise his army and we will raise ours. Question is, will we be able to defeat him ourselves? Like I said, I think we need to get a little bit back from the fox here. So we will call in the fox and that is going to give us a large advantage here. Significantly outnumbering us. This should be something of a cakewalk here. And it makes sense. You know, we've we've fought in many wars on behalf of Apulia. And so now it is time for us to, to get our own out of that. So we are going to engage in battle here. Looks like we will be able to ca hit, catch him here in the woods of the barony of Stigliano. And the battle should no doubt go heavily in our favor. Obviously, many of our sons are going to be fighting in this battle. Oh no, Danolo. Oh no, our good friend Danolo, our good friend and steward Danolo was killed in the battle. That is very unfortunate. Oh, what, what was that? Well, we missed it, I'm sure. It was probably just Jordan maiming some other fool in the battle. That would be what I would suspect, honestly. And easily crushed his forces there. Damn, poor Dinolo. He was a, a good man, and he died too young, only 30 years old. His spot on the council will need to be replaced, but his place in our heart as a good friend uh, can never be replaced. Uh, my nephew, Richard Drangot, will take on that position. He is quite skilled at it. And we shall see if he can live up to his predecessor. Now, it is only a matter of capturing the county of Salerno, and then we can begin to move on to other matters. All right, and as you can see, we have captured the County of Salerno, along with Landolf, the Marshal of Prince Gizulf, and his son. Which means that we can look into getting a few ransoms here, which will be nice. We can get a little bit of money back. So we're going to do that. But while that happened, Duke Richard is calling me in once again into another war. Join, join the Holy War as a defender. Oh, Duke Robert. You... Well, we don't really have a... Uh, we don't have a lot of choice. We can't simply let uh, High Chieftain Munis Ibn Yokana and his allies take that land from us. No, we're gonna have to... We're gonna have to accept. That is... Very frustrating. At least 
we have managed to capture Salerno here. We're going to, we're actually going to wait a moment before enforcing our demands. We, our troops are already raised, so we are going to just attach them and prepare for the the incoming invasion here. We do have to look for what we're going to do in terms of this. I think we're just going to lower our building construction costs. That seems fine, as we will hopefully soon be preparing to, to do some construction there. All right, we got our ransom there. We're just going to do this one last ransom, and then we will, we will force our demands upon Salerno here as we will definitely need the the money. Yes, there we go. And your county is ours now. We can't forget about the hook that we have on Count Sergios. Oh dear, what can we do with that? You know, while our brother, no, what, Count Sergios? Oh, we're not letting him lead the army. You know, in fact, I think I should be leading this army, honestly, if we're going to war against uh, invaders from the south. Uh, but we need to do something about uh, Napoli here. What can we use that hook for? Use the secret you have gained for a hook? Will that give us a... Ooh, a strong hook! Yeah, we're gonna call, we're gonna blackmail Sergios here. We're going to tell him, and you know, I feel bad about this, but I don't think Duke Richard would feel bad about this. You know, we're basically going to say, if you don't do what we want, we are going to let everybody know that you are a deviant. So we have that strong hook, which means we could potentially, we could revoke his title. This would be an act of tyranny. Even with the hook, it's still an act of tyranny. I I think that's not really, you know, I think we need to, we have to get rid of this guy. You know, we can't just simply have, I mean, there is the possibility that we, we take his son and raise him as a good Norman lad, but no, I think, I think we need to, I think we need to put a Norman in charge of that land. So we took that from him. He's going to go wander off somewhere else. And that gives us full control over all three of these. Now we will be looking to parse these out, but I think, I mean, we have three sons. We have three sons and we have three counties. So I think we're going to, at the moment, hold those counties for our sons. I think that seems logical. And finally, we can rid ourselves of Sergio Spartanos, who's been nothing but a thorn in our side. Luckily, we were able to get that secret over him. We are seen as being tyrannical, but I don't think that is a huge concern to us. We should be able to manage our subjects through fear, if nothing else. This is going to be quite the battle, and I am going to be leading our army here myself. So this should be quite interesting, and I wonder how this battle's going to go. Yeah, look at all the forces we have. Uh, quite a few, uh, yeah, we've got allies from over here in Epirus and Croatia. So it's quite a, quite a coalition we've got here. So let's see how this goes. Count Theodoros was wounded. Mayor Bernard was wounded. And yep, looks like we're easily, and our knight was, ooh, our son was wounded once again. Oh no, he wounded, uh, he wounded an enemy. Jordan, you are, he's only got one kill, Drogo de Hotville, but uh, he's fought really well and wounded a lot of named people. I mean, obviously he's killed other people in these battles, I'm sure, but. Our son is still, he still is unmarried. You know, I wonder, and obviously in Crusader Kings 3, you as the ruler set up all these marriages yourself, but I think in this case, I'm wondering if this uh, young woman that we've brought into our court, who is extremely beautiful and, you know, is 
really a, a hard worker. Well, yeah, she is a hard worker, a little bit arrogant, uh, but forgiving as well. She's incredibly beautiful, smart, uh, tactful, and she's raising, you know, she's tutoring all the children. I wonder if at some point during their time in the castle here together, if Bartholomew and Ansia, you know, struck up a romance and perhaps, you know, after, after a few months here, Bartholomew has come to ask me if he can take Ansia's hand in marriage. Now, obviously Ansia is quite low born, perhaps just the daughter of a baronet or some sort of Italian equivalent. But I think that in this case, being my third son, having already had a child, I think we could say yes. I don't see I don't see why not. So I think we're going to allow our son to marry his uh, new love, Ansia. Now, I don't think they're actually lovers or anything like that, but I still think that, you know, it, it kind of makes sense from a, from a roleplay perspective. So, yeah, we're going to have them have them get married. I think it just adds, like, an interesting kind of element to his story. Oh, wow, we must have captured their leader in that battle. Because we just uh, we just won the war. All the money goes to Duke Robert, which is somewhat frustrating. Well, well then, that uh, that was probably the easiest. Uh, just one decisive battle, and then the war was ours. Well, that uh, gives us some new things to consider here as we kind of look to managing our new realm here, which we've really consolidated underneath our own firm hand here. Wait, what? Hold on a moment. Hold on here. Are these independent states? Yeah, I think these Italian states have gone independent. Tuscany, Lombardy, Piedmont and Provence have all broken away from the Holy Roman Empire. Pisa as well. That is really interesting. And Bavaria, what is Bavaria doing? Man, there's a lot of infighting going on here. Who's the ruler of the Holy Roman Empire right now? Kaiser Heinrich the uh Ninth, no, four, sorry, fourth. He is cynical, gluttonous, wrathful. He seems like a reasonably strong. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he is so far in debt. He is so far in debt that that debt may be the mismanagement of his kingdom, maybe why the Italian states have all just broken off. I mean, this actually did happen historically, but much, much later when the Italian states broke away from the Holy Roman Empire. But this is happening way earlier, and this is provides some really interesting possibilities for us Normans here in the South. Maybe not to directly go against uh, Duchess Matilda here or some of the other Italian lords, but it does prevent the Holy Roman Empire from kind of moving further south. They have things to deal with here in Italy first. I think that will be a big boon to us. And it does leave us some really interesting possibilities here in Sardinia and Corsica. Oh, and look at this. High Chieftain Munis ibn Yukana has taken over one of the counties here on Sardinia. That may be something worth investigating for us, as this may now be a possible route for expansion. I think, I think it may be, and I think that this could give us the reasoning that we need to make our way over here. Now, 
as you can see, Duke Robert is kind of consolidating his hold here in Sicily. And we're not we're kind of left with very little room for expansion. But with Sardinia and Corsica here now out from under the thumb of the Holy Roman Empire, and with these Muslim lords from North Africa conquering the Christian rulers here, we might have reason to say that in the name of Christendom, we are going to return order here to Sardinia and protect it from the invasion of the forces from North Africa. And I think that is a job for our bishop. Yeah, so you're going to head over here to um, Logoduro. And yeah, he's going to start uh, mustering up support for that cause, saying that, yeah, we somebody needs to go in here and protect this land for Christendom. And who better who better than us? Yeah, we need some sort of Cassus Belli, but with with that, we should be able to make make some sort of reasoning suggesting that there's no better person than us to protect this land. I think that makes a whole lot of sense. We also have a dynasty legacy. Obviously we have a lot of different options here. Customs, warfare, law, guile, blood, erudition, glory, kin. I think um, time and time again though, we've proven that we are a house of warriors, especially our son Jordan. So I think that we are going to go here with the prowess and the knight effectiveness. I think it just is the one that makes the the most sense for us here. So that should give us some very interesting and exciting possibilities here in the near future. Possibilities that we will be exploring in the next episode as we look to the west for expansion opportunities and perhaps some intriguing possibilities here in northern italy as well that's for next time though thank you guys so much for watching once again as always if you have some thoughts on where things could go into the next episode if there's anything you're interested in seeing more of um characters you know what's going on in the rest of the world if you guys want me to do a episode where a little interlude thing where we can go and see some of the things that are going on in the rest of the world like what happened with england here what's going on with france stuff like that uh let me know in the comments below otherwise we will just be coming back with a, another future episode of this and uh, quite soon so until then Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you all in the next one.